Welcome to another episode of The Modern Moron. We cover a lot of ground in these next three episodes with the Senator with a very general and broad theme of propaganda, fake news, gossip, and conspiracy theories. You would think I would air these in order. No, I'm not going to do that. And I'm starting with the last. Why? I have no good reason. Not Nothing. Nothing whatsoever. Regarding conspiracies and fake news, etc., the lines seem to get grayer and grayer on where news becomes gossip and then becomes propaganda, which becomes conspiracy. But they're all big business, and they're all vying for our eyes and ears. We talk about the rewards of bad behavior. It just occurred to me that maybe the difference between uh, a personality spinning the news and a personality perpetuating conspiracy theories is a suit, a tie, and a three-letter network behind you. Maybe? Possible? No. If you're wearing a suit, you must be credible, right? At one point, the senator commands me to look up some politician for him as if I'm his personal assistant, and I have to gently remind him that he's actually sitting in front of a computer himself and is capable of typing with his own little ten fat fingers. Then we have two separate conversations about two separate Republican candidates to run as Joe Biden's VP candidate, and naturally neither one of us is listening to the other which makes for a really constructive conversation. Nice work, fellas, just like they do on the political TV shows. The senator gives us a history lesson on the foundations of the Democratic and Republican parties, President Lyndon Johnson and the signing of the Civil Rights Act, and the contribution of gerrymandering on our polarized political parties, all through the eyes of a couple of morons. So don't expect even a shred of factual accuracy. The recording you're about to hear is at the end of an almost hour-long recording session, We were wrapping it up, and I hit record one more time, air quotes, just in case. So if you've been listening to this podcast for a while, you've probably heard me refer to addiction issues. My latest addiction is varied combinations of chocolate and caramel, or any mix of sugar with a little more sugar mixed in. I've had issues with other substances, and I admit to not being very diligent with a 12-step program I have been a part of for a number of years. Listen as the senator makes even my addiction issues all about him. It's classic senator on the modern moron. I've stopped going to any meetings online. You stopped? God, mm-hmm. God, I'd love to hear about that, really. Why don't you sit in on one? What a perfect opportunity. You could sit in on one. You'd be anonymous. You didn't have to say a word. You just listen and see what it's like. I would love to do that. Serious. Great. Yeah. I, I would love to do that. Let's, we could do it Sunday night if you want, if you're around. I think that would be very interesting. Extremely. Yeah. It's, uh, I don't get much out of it anymore. I don't get as much out of it. I think. Would it be wrong for me to have a cocktail while I'm listening in? My name is Barney and I'm an alcoholic. That would be a little disrespectful, I think. Okay. Fair enough. Then I won't. Fair enough. I value uh, your opinion. Yeah. <laughs> You're all, yeah. You know, you know what's interesting? And this says volumes about you. I confess to you that I've stopped attending these virtual meetings for my addictions. And you know what your first response was? I'd like to, I'd like to listen in on one of those. <laughs> not, not, Hey, my friend, why are you not, you need to get back into that. Is, is, are you, do you think you're going to relapse? You think you're going to use again? Not that, not that. <laughs> oh, I'd like, I'd like to do that. I want to do that. Can I drink a cocktail? <laughs> uh, you're a great friend. I've said it before and I'll say it again. I'm a horrible friend. I'm horrible. <laughs> get him out of here. You know that. You are. You kind of are. But I'm grandfathered you're unreli- in. You're unreliable. I love you. What? You love me. I'm grandfathered in. You cannot leave me. It's been too long. I'm sorry. But you know, you, you know, <laughs> at least you know where I stand. I mean, you know, it's, it is what it is. What do you think about us trying to get on the air in our, in our hometown? Oh, we, I, I, yeah, no, no. Why not? anonymously or sure well say that again i don't want to say it again because you'll make fun of you, me you can't say anonymously anonymously very good what if we both had anonymous names we both have reasons to be anonymous on the air i'm a yeah. i don't want people to know that yeah. i can't speak my mind i would have to do that <sighs> and you could do the same 
you probably couldn't even be the senator. <laughs> and you know what would be torturous for you? If we were brought on broadcasting out in this city and you couldn't tell anyone, oh, that would kill you. Mine's bigger than that. That would kill you. Yes, it would kill me. Yes. So I shouldn't We'd have pursue to go that. to a different format. We'd have to go to a way different. It wouldn't be fun. Wouldn't be fun. Okay, then forget it because yeah. it's got to be fun. It's got to yeah. be fun. Yeah. Okay. I would be too afraid. And I uh, I don't know how to explain. You, you know, I, uh, what do you know how to explain? <laughs> do you think I get offended very easily? Do you think I'm easily offended? Uh, not by me, I don't think, because you know me and you yeah. don't really care what I think. <laughs> 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 That's the truth. I mean, I don't think I offend you. But I think if somebody that didn't know you well said something disparate or, or yeah. unsavory about you in yeah. any way, I think you would be very sensitive and very offended. And I think there are way too many people who would be offended by the humor or by points of view or things. Yeah, you couldn't handle fame, actually. Well, no. Because there would be people that wouldn't care for your brand of humor or your opinions, and, and that would drive you crazy. Yeah, and, and some of my opinions are. As you, as you can ask my family, any one of my family members, I say a lot of things for reaction, even though I don't believe them. Like a conspiracy theorist? I want I want a reaction. I want to push the button. Like a conspiracy theorist? Like no. our president? No, I wouldn't say that. Not conspiracy, but I want a reaction. I want a reaction. But do you know how little it takes to be a conspiracy? All you have to do is say something, well, maybe, maybe I did it, maybe I didn't, or maybe... It was a third party. Boom, conspiracy. There's the truth, and then there's the direct lie, and then there's, once you start spinning things, you're conspiring to create a different reality. Because I push buttons, you think that makes me a conspiracy theorist? A sp conspirator? Conspirator? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know that much about it. But I know it's big business. Conspiracy yeah. theorism and conspiracy theorists are big business right now. Is it partly because of Trump spinning left and spinning right. I don't think it's any one person's fault. It's everyone's fault. We all have collectively have the responsibility to, in a free market society, capitalist society, yeah. to weigh the checks and balances and to ignore the ridiculous. And we're not. We're doing the opposite of ignoring the ridiculous. We're honoring it. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> you're, you're welcome. Vote, vote, for, vote the modern moron in 2020. Do you consider Bigfoot a conspiracy? I think explanations for it can be a conspiracy. Good. I agree. I, I totally agree. What about um, the spiritual world? Do you believe in ghosts? I don't, I don't know. I think the best thing I can answer on those things, and this is going to make me sound pompous and self-righteous, but I think... Oh, 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 we want that to happen. <laughs> Please. Are you, are you the kettle or the pot in this scenario? I, exactly. See, I'm Jesus, push, I'm pushing a button. I'm just looking. I, I, he didn't really push my button because you're so ridiculous on the surface. <laughs> Is that the difference between really intelligent people and really wise people turning intelligence into knowledge into wisdom? is that the people that have turned it into wisdom know that there is so much more they don't know. People that have knowledge and think, I know everything. Mm. Mm, that's where things get dangerous. Yeah. And that's when you have your Trumps and your, your pundits that think, you know, everybody should think the way I think. Everybody should interpret it my way. <laughs> right? Oh. Rachel Maddow, Bill yeah. Maher, Ann Coulter, ugh, Alex Jones, Carl Rove is a pundit, Chris Matthews, Glenn Beck, Keith Oberman, Barf, Sean Hannity, Joy Behard, Joy Blowhard, and Michael Moore. Oh, God, I can't stand any of those people. Do you they come do out you, with their radical do, do what they do for reaction, or do you really think they believe in? You know what I think? What Can I say? let me answer that by saying at some point you start believing your own bullshit or you have to sell it. You've said it. Alex yeah. Jones said it. Yeah. So now he's got to, you got to back it up. Oh, oh, or, 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 or I was just being sarcastic. Mm. See, then, then you do lose. Are you the real deal or are you not? 
Alex Jones is not the real deal. He's a f-ing entertainer, but he's coming off. And, and so is Rush Limbaugh. He's a f-ing entertainer. Yes, I agree. And he gets the, he gets the, uh, the medal of freedom award. Please. I don't care if you have a liberal, anybody in the, in the news entertainment business does not deserve the medal of freedom award. That goes back to my original point just a couple minutes ago. Do you think that, award was given to him because he deserved it or because somebody wanted to push a bunch of buttons on the other side. I have become the expert. Well, Trump makes that decision, doesn't he? Yeah. So you know why he did that. He was just, he's rubbing their nose in dog poo. (laughs) And, And in this scenario, Rush Limbaugh is dog poop? No, no. I think yes, he is. He absolutely is. And you're right. But Trump is doing it not because he deserved the award. Trump is doing it because he wants to push buttons. He wants to put, you know, the he, opposite. he wanted to be entertaining. Yeah. He wanted- hey, watch this. This will get some clicks. Yeah. See what I can do. I mean, look I- what I can do. Watch this. Watch all the people tweet about this. Yes. I'm going to make Rush Limbaugh. <laughs> Watch yes. this, you guys. I'm going to give Rush Limbaugh the Medal of Freedom Award. <laughs> it's going to be hilarious. Look at all those fucking liberals going crazy. That's it. That's it. That's where we should end it. Right there. Because you're 100% right. <laughs> but it's to God. People are attracted to that type of behavior. I really do. I think people... I just said, we're rewarding bad behavior. Yes. It's... All the way back to what I said in that little letter I s- sent you, which would be the opening of this. For me, it goes back to the first reality show was Survivor. And that first... Did you watch that? That first season? No, I never... Where that I guy... I, I'm sorry. I never watched that show. I just... I didn't. He would, he would walk around naked all the time on the island. Okay. And he would creep everybody out, especially the women. And he ended up winning the game and he was disliked. And then straight from Trump's playbook and the apprentice, I think she was the first year Omarosa, an absolute villain. She was a nasty person. She won. And she was in his cabinet for a while, wasn't she? Maybe she wasn't in his cabinet, but she was certainly a, an advisor. It's like bad behavior gets rewarded now. Yeah. God. And it's got to stop. I don't know how it's going to stop, but it 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 needs to stop. I wish I had an answer for that. I don't know how it's going to stop. I mean, the, we don't have states, we don't have statesmen, states people anymore. You know, states women, states men, whatever you want to call. It. You know, one thing I heard Nancy Pelosi say that I ag- agreed with, and I think you might agree with this. Let me float it by you. I was looking for that soundbite of her telling Trump he was morbidly obese. He's our president, and I would rather he not be taking something that has not been approved uh, by the scientist, especially in his age group and in his, shall we say, weight group, what is morbidly obese, they say. And I wanted to hear her, because she said something um, about being holy. Very, very Catholic family, right? You knew that, right? Yes. She's very Catholic. Yep. And she said, and I'll put this in, in the, description. This is a quote from Nancy Pelosi talking about her parents. They didn't raise me to be speaker. They raised me to be holy. They didn't raise me to be speaker. They raised me to be holy. Really? And do you think calling Donald Trump morbidly obese was holy? I don't think it was. As a Catholic and supporting abortion doesn't make you very holy either. She addresses that because the interviewer asks her about that. He says, well, you're, you know, you're a Democrat and a lot of liberal ideas and you're very steeped in, in uh, very rooted in your religion of Catholicism. How do you deal with that? And she, you know, like any good politician, I respect a, an individual and all that stuff. Yeah, yeah. But my, what, what she did say that I think you will agree with, she said, what do you say to your, uh, colleagues, your Republican colleagues. And she said, I would say to my friends in the Republican party, take your party back. This isn't what you guys are about. This is not the Republican party. Take it back. I totally agree with that. You can say that about both parties, but I agree with that. Absolutely. How how do you think the democratic party has changed? Do you think it's just overall shifted further to the left? Yes. Or how, how do you think it's changed? From when, from when they organized the KKK? and supported slavery. I mean, I'd like to... The Democratic Party did? Yes, of course. The, the KKK. And what are we talking? We talking post-Civil War? What, what era are we talking? I'm talking about the foundation of the party. Okay, the foundation of the Democratic Party was racism. Uh-huh. The foundation of the Republican Party was we want to abolish slavery. You got the right. Whigs, 
Then you got the Republicans, uh-huh. Lincoln right. and Whig. Okay, so, yeah. And, and I don't mean to go back to that foundation, but go back to... But that it no, you should. Hey, when things get out of whack, you go back to the foundation. You yeah. go back to the basics. You go back to the founding principles, right? Sure, you want to say that? Well, let's let's just let's go back fifty years. Go back to uh, Lyndon Johnson, who brought in the Civil Rights Act, and when he got on Air Force One after signing it, and I'm not going to say the word, but it's a fact that he got on it, and he said, "We're going to have every one of those," and he used the N word, voting for us for the next two hundred years. Lyndon Johnson didn't believe in civil rights. He didn't believe in the civil rights bill. What he believed in is I want them all voting for us for the next 200 years. That's what Mm -hmm. he believed in. And that's wrong. And that's what I want to get away from. Do you think that's when the Democratic Party's paradigm started shifting? I think it was in the early 60s. I mean, here's what you have. You used to, and I don't mean used to, I mean 30 years ago, let's just say you used to have, you had Reagan Democrats, right? You had conservative Republicans and you had liberal Republicans in the East. You had liberal Republicans in the East and you had uh, conservative Democrats in the South and you had liberal Republicans in in the West and you had conservative Republicans in the Midwest and in the uh, center of the country. Now you have this divide where you had a lot of Democrats to vote for Reagan. Now you have this divide where it's either you're right or you're left. You're either red or you're blue. There is no mm-hmm. purple. There is no middle. There is no Reagan Democrats anymore. There's there's just there's no compromise. Vote for, I'm going to vote for him because he's Republican. I'm going to vote for him because he's Democrat. And you know that I have voted for D's and I voted for R's. I don't understand why this divide is so big, this gap between why can't we have conservative Democrats and liberal Republicans? What's wrong with that? Why can't you? I would love it. I would love I would it. I love it too. And I think that's How about the common right. sense party. We got to get back to that. And part of that problem is redistricting when you do these gerrymandering, when you make these laws in Texas and California, these different states where you draw these boundaries around, you know, Detroit. Well, okay, Detroit is heavily African American. So the Democrats get in, they draw the boundaries. You're always going to have a Democrat representing Detroit, you're always going to have Democrats representing Chicago. That's the problem. They've created the issue by these boundaries. That Who's they? they? Who's they? The politicians, all the politicians. Who's ever mm-hmm. in charge, right? That's who they're... Mm-hmm. And every what? Every 10 years after the census, they draw these lines, they gerrymander the districts, these boundaries, and they make it to where they're in forever. And the next person gets in, it's going to be a Democrat because they draw the lines where it's just inevitable that a Democrat's going to win because that's how they've drawn the lines. And it's terrible. And that's created this atmosphere of us versus them. I think that's a huge part of the problem. Why couldn't we have a ticket with a Republican and a Democrat on it? Lincoln did. That's 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 what I'm saying. Why can't Joe Biden get the most liberal Republican, preferably a woman, or, or, and, or a person of color, and God, that would be huge, huge, bigger than than p- picking a person of color in your own party. If he picked a person of the opposition of the party of the, of an R, mm-hmm. even if that person wasn't a liberal Republican, maybe a moderate Republican. You're asking a lot there. How about a Republican picking a, a moderate Democrat? I love it. Like, I love it. I, I, yeah, but that's not going to happen. Like, let's take some baby steps here. Reach, reach across the aisle and get... Someone that you could kind of, um, just the fact that you're reaching over and getting a Republican, that's a pretty big leap. Yeah, yeah. But expecting them to jump right in the middle of them, you know, baby steps. Do you know of a liberal thinking Republican senator or Republican governor? I think Rand Paul's more of a libertarian. He's a Republican, but he's more of a libertarian. Who's the governor of Maryland? Isn't he the leader of all, uh, the governor of Maryland? Isn't he like the leader of... There's look a governor's up, association. Look up William Weld. Look up William W E L D. William Weld. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna look up governor. You look it up. You're sitting in front of a computer too. Oh, you're such a sassy girl. God. <laughs> Jeez. I'm thinking of Larry Hogan, heads the executive branch of the government of the state of Maryland, and is the commander in chief. Oh, Bill Weld. He changed his he changed his affiliation to Libertarian in in 2016. He was a Republican. Former governor of Massachusetts. Good. How'd I say that? I like the way you slowed down there. I know. I talk good. <laughs> He's got to be running under the Libertarian Party. You told me, though, wasn't. What the f-ing party is this guy? Uh, the guy from Maryland is. See? Bill Weld is right. running as the Libertarian for 2020. He's running at the Libertarian Party. 
I might be voting for Bill Weld. Bill Weld. Oh, right? Well, it's probably going to be, unless you really start seeing his name pop up, you're wasting your vote. Well, I'm not voting for those two numbnuts that we got going now. Jeez. Well, you just said you were going to vote for Trump. No, I'm not going to vote for Trump. I'm yes, you did. You Trump. said if it's between Biden and Trump, I'm voting for Trump. No, I'm not voting for Trump. I'm voting against Biden. You're incredible. <sighs> okay. Absolutely incredible. So there. You voted for Hillary, right? <laughs> <laughs> All right, it's cocktail hour. Let's wrap this up. You know, I couldn't even make a straight-faced response to that. Oh, well, I'm not a very good actor. But I'm telling you, if Joe Biden had this moron advising him, and why wouldn't he? I'm one of the smartest morons I know. I'd tell him to make it public that he's going to consider a Republican for his running mate and talk to a couple of them. Doesn't mean he has to pick one, but to make it public creates the perception that he's looking to reach across the aisle. I think it'd be great to actually do it, but just to announce it, to shake things up, I think it's a win-win. How, do, how does that work against you? I hope you found something in that episode entertaining or informative. In the next two episodes, we'll continue to talk more about conspiracy theorists and their platforms, mostly podcasts, the more radical you get, and how they are on the spectrum that starts with hopefully reporting the news, then spinning the news, which isn't nearly as bad as spreading propaganda about a subject or a person, and then to conspiracy theories, how wild the conspiracy is, versus how well a particular individual or group can sell the conspiracy. We'll see you next time, and as always, thank you for listening. Pelosi is a sick woman. She's got a lot of problems, a lot of mental problems. Our, he's our president, and I would rather he not be taking something that has not been approved uh, by the scientists, especially in his age group and in his, shall we say, weight group, what is morbidly obese, they say.